Hello everyone! Today we are gonna react to Eternity's End, with, which is the 9.2, World of Warcraft 9.2 patch. And let's see what they have for us in... What, what is waiting for us? The Shadowlands story pulls together threads that started in Warcraft 3 and wove their way through many of our expansions. Okay. We approached it like... I mean, I don't really know which... For Warcraft 3, I don't really know what is this... How is this even related? <laughs> but, okay. Like a drama in three acts. Now, as the third... A drama in three acts, like... Like, they, they are not... I mean, obviously 9.3 doesn't exist, then, but I don't think they have planned that from the beginning. It sounds a bit weird. But sure, sure, so they thought they already plan to solve the short expansion. Third and final act begins of the saga. We need to stop the jailer from reaching his ultimate goal, which is to rewrite the rules of reality. Eternity's okay. End serves as the final chapter of one book of the Warcraft saga. Okay. The jailer has the advantage. He has seized the sigils of the leaders of the Four Covenants. We see Sylvanas realize that she's been a pawn in the Jailer's game this entire time, and <laughs> she refuses to serve him. I'm late. Prisoner. <laughs> the Jailer is able to open a portal to who knows where, taking Anduin with him. And the Primus had us take some time to retrieve some new sigils. Now we have gathered okay. our forces. We are working with the Primus to open our own gateway to pursue the Jailer to this realm unlike any we've seen before. Like we have never seen before. Mortis. The Primus opens a portal, and we come into this alien land. It's yes. completely white, foggy, we're walking on water for some reason. They can only make out some shapes, some figures there, some crazy devices and consoles. Eventually, okay. you make your way to a giant gate, and behind it lies Zareth Mortis. Okay. Zareth Mortis was created by the First Ones and it is intended to create afterlives. Think of it as being tucked away in the fabric of the Shadowlands itself. It's kind of the behind the scenes of these afterlives that we've journeyed to. Okay. It's the land where the progenitors, the first ones who created all of the realms of the Shadowlands, this is their workshop. They've created everything we've experienced in Azeroth and Shadowlands and even realms. Okay, so it's not only... Is I mean they were mentioning it a lot about uh, Shadowlands, the afterlives, but they are mentioning Azeroth as well. We haven't discovered yet. These first ones okay. built the universe, as far as we know, but their intentions or methods are completely unknown. But of course, the jailer's presence okay. here is disrupting this process, and we're working to push back against the jailer's forces and protect this. I mean, they they don't. Didn't they, they, ah, didn't they say that they didn't know what the Jailer wanted? But what the Jailer wants to destroy this. Okay, so we, I think we the know artists it, have but. done a fantastic job. And I know they did a lot of research and they looked at a lot of real life examples of very strange places in the real world. As a team, we were really trying to make this place as alien as possible. So we really wanted to make everything feel completely unique and completely different. Our okay. trees here are floating. We have stones that are floating. We even have the massive Forge of Afterlives that is floating in the center. I mean, I've seen trees and land floating before. Like, it's, that's nothing new. That's nothing new. The zone. And true to its name, it's something that is kind of putting together a new afterlife to be sent out into the Shadowlands. We have this water all around you because water is really the catalyst for any kind of creation. It's actually unlike any other water that we've seen before. This is actually water that we can walk on. It almost creates like a threshold between Sereth Mortis and some other kind of more primordial space right below it. Everything you see in Sereth Mortis has a, a purpose, an intention behind it. For us, it was really important to find ways to convey that intention in the environment itself. And one of the ways in which we did it was through this duality between a lush and a dry biome. In okay. the dry biome, we see perhaps what the original look of the zone was when the progenitors were first establishing this workspace for themselves. And in perhaps. the lush biome, we see the result of their experimentation with plant life and fauna and things like that. These are all test beds for what we'll eventually see elsewhere. Okay. From there, we started thinking about what kinds of creatures would be in this place. I mean, they're talking too much and showing too little. That are fundamentally uh, prototypes. 
There's terraforming here. There's creatures that are building afterlives. We tried okay. to really stretch and think what that might be like. My per I mean, if they were really trying to look alien, that, uh, to look very alien, he, that frog didn't look too alien to me. Personal favorite includes the giant armored snail, and we also have a progenitor chicken, which answers the question of what came first. Okay. These first ones who crafted Zareth Mortis, what they left behind were the Automa, meant to take care of the place and make sure that it fulfilled. I mean, if they look, wanted to look it half done, they achieved it. Because, for example, this thing. Let me see. No. These first ones who okay, okay, wait crafted Zareth Mortis, <laughs> what they left behind. This were... thing looks half done. I'm sorry, this looks half done. I don't really care. It looks half done, and even if they wanted to look like half done, it, it, I mean, they achieve it. <laughs> Automa meant to take care of the place and make sure that it fulfilled its function to create afterlives. The Automa have several different classes, and you can see this in their silhouettes. We have the builders, we have the protectors, we have the casters, and each one of them have a specific role within the Shadowlands. And then you'll also discover the Jiro, which are a part of the Automa. They're a little more quirky. They have a little more personality. They are a little more sentient than the other Automa, so some of them even split off to pursue their own desires. Unfortunately, when we found our way in, devourers also found their way in. They are ravenous. They're consuming this weird energy, and it's causing them to mutate and to fall apart. And the Automa, where they are confronted by them, some of them are fighting them off. And so it's going to take some time for them to understand that we're here trying to help them drive out this threat. Okay. Fortunately, we've got some allies. There are some enlightened brokers here that we're going to be working with. But it's a broker that arrived here quite a long time ago and has had a change of heart from looking at the world as a very transactional place to seeing this place as a holy place, a sacred place. We meet an enlightened one named Fareem, and Fareem needs our assistance. Okay. And in return, he leads us to Haven, which is a hub that has been created out of progenitor ruins. And this is where the enlightened really have made their home. Haven serves as our foothold here, as well as use it as a base of operations and really start unlocking the mysteries of this land. Okay, like got The enlightened brokers are intent on protecting and preserving the work of the first ones here. But now they're seeing Zoval bring his forces against the Atoma and tear up the land, and they are eager for assistance. The brokers themselves are very ostentatious. They're very into materialism, but the enlightened are not that at all. They have relinquished this material way, and you'll see this reflected in their clothes. They're a little tattered, they're a little faded, because it just isn't important to them anymore. They're just here for the pursuit of knowledge. Okay. When players arrive, they're kind of fishes out of water. And one of the first things that we have to do is start learning how to communicate with the Automa. Think of it as a kind of runic language based in symbols. We will bond with a small construct who's pretty cute, actually. And with okay. his assistance and the assistance of Farim, uh, we will learn eventually how to understand the symbols through the cipher of the first ones. We'll uncover okay. different parts of this alphabet and start to learn more about the progenitors and Zareth Mortis itself. It will allow you to unlock new and different forms of content. Okay, so I get to so that can range from daily quest to new options on the vendors to play. The, okay. I mean, I post it in the best moment, but <laughs> this is only for the daily quest. It's nothing, it's nothing, this video is just to show you the zone and that's it. Okay. This is to explore a new side quest that open up. So it's really the gateway to exploring the far reaches of Zareth Mortis. As we looked into the development of Cypher of the First Ones, we wanted something that was unique that players haven't seen before. A little bit of familiarity, but something that takes that to the next level. We really involved the whole team in this creative process. We worked with our UI team to be able to represent those through text, through these things talking and seeing them on screen in chat bubbles and, and in our chat window. Little by little, these kind of runes start taking shape into words that we recognize. But it's going to be a process that unfolds over the course of playing through Eternities. End. Okay. The Automa speak in this kind of musical language. Okay. 
They don't talk the way that we mortals are used to speaking. The sound team was super excited. They jumped in, uh, they started prototyping all kinds of different sounds. We listened, we gave feedback. And we really ended up in a cool place. As you're playing through and gradually unlocking the language, you'll be able I'm to see something. those words that they're I'm saying, missing something. but still hear those tones. The jailer's true goal has never really been to escape the maw or to gain power. He's been focused on reaching this place called the Sepulchre, okay. to go into this place of power and okay, to so really rewrite the, right. the rules of the universe. We'll learn that the jailer has breached the Sepulchre of the first ones, and this becomes our new raid for Eternity's End. We're okay. going to gather our forces, we're, we're going to right. pursue the jailer inside. That's good. Once you go inside <laughs> the Sepulchre, there are some mind-blowing visuals. This is a place that should not be able to exist according to the laws of physics as we know them on Azeroth. Just looking out into this impossible sky of seeing these ancient works of the first ones, those laws don't okay. apply to anything we see here. Among the bosses that we're gonna face in Sepulchre of the First Ones include the Jailer's forces, <laughs> okay. maybe a Dreadlord or two that you haven't tied up loose ends with. Uh, we'll face a Constellar. This is similar to a being like Algalon, but the Jailer's gotten to it and has infused his domination magic into the Constellar. Okay. Before we get to the Jailer, however, we need to get to Anduin first. Our hope is that we can learn whatever Anduin knows about domination magic. We need to be able to resist it, or better yet, fight it. Okay, so it's a bit like... Uh, we know players have been waiting a long three. time for the return of tier sets, and as devs, we have too. It's a great blend of progenitor okay, magic, okay. This is pretty goals, cool. this metals, is pretty cool. along with those class-defining silhouettes, wolves for shamans, pointy things for rogues. It's going to look amazing. Pointy things for Our rogues. Our class and combat team was super excited to bring class sets back. This is something that felt really right for the story. We're in the I, I mean, honestly, I think the, this is a, a kind of a joke. If they were really excited, they would have been them before final act of the Shadowlands saga. We're here literally on the brink at eternity's end. And what okay. better place to fully unleash the power of these classes. And I think players will really enjoy the return of those class sets just as much as the team enjoyed making them. Good, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They How look you make something cool and, that is and mystical and magical and incomprehensible and yet understandable. I think we've done a good job of finding that line. The team as a whole has been working so hard and we are so excited to get this out for everyone. We're gonna get new mounts, new pets. A bit horrifying for me, but exciting for some is the fact that, you know, some of the spider mounts can now fly. Who needs flying spiders? But that's also gonna be a cool thing for people. We have updates to professions, to soul binds, to conduits. There's a new dancing minigame in Darkmoon Fair. I'm story guy, so I'm super geeked about watching players kind of piece together those little lore tidbits. That's what excites me as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm really looking forward to season three of Mythic Plus. Tazavesh is getting... They are waiting for people to play in the, in the game. ...split into two dungeons. The, the, so, the in, they are waiting for the players to play in the, in the game, the story of the game. If you're if you're a raider, if you chase Keystone Master, if you're an achievement collector, there's something for everyone to do in this. Shadowlands is like the final chapter of one book of the Warcraft saga. And our team is already hard at work on the next stories to come. Can't talk about them quite yet, but when the time is right, we're going to be really excited to share them with you. Okay, so there is no date. The water we can walk on, nice. He finally found Bane. Looks like he's doing his best to save the universe. There's a new dancing <laughs> mini game in Dark Fair. I'm story guy, yes. so I'm super geeked about. Yeah, that's really good. That's really good. Trees are floating. Stars are floating. Nagram, exactly, exactly. That's what I was talking about. Yeah, I mean, it looks alien because I mean, Nagram was in an alien place, so I guess. 98% aesthetics and arts, 2% actual gameplay edition. Yeah, exactly, exactly. I mean, it wasn't aesthetics and art. There were people giving their opinion, I think, in most of the video. I mean... Yeah, uh, same, same. Exactly. It's unlikely any other water we have been seen we have seen before. Exciting. Tell me more about this water. Can you drink it? Okay. 
Let's see. What? Is there anything else? Or it was that was it. 10.2. Okay, so that was it. What happens? How was it 8.2? Ah, uh, they don't have this kind of. But I mean, they, they, I mean, I would put it for something like this. Okay, a bit of a video, and then we get, you know, like this. This is, I mean, I hate to compare this, but 8.2 was such a, such a good patch compared with the. Uh, I mean, I, I, I can't compare to 9.2 yet, but to, to whatever we're playing now. <laughs> I mean, whatever, whoever is playing is still World of Warcraft. 